Spurge here, and in this video we're going to break down the new HJC V10 helmet. So HJC is going after a lifestyle aesthetic with the new V10. Really this is going to be something that harkens back to more of a vintage inspired race helmet. There's a lot of these different styles that are popping up in the market. I thought the whole vintage looking helmet thing was dead. But apparently the trend continues and HJC is getting in on the action with the new V10. So pricing for this will come in around the $330 to $345 price point to start, depending on the color and the graphic that you're going with. And what you're really going to see is a helmet that is designed to match up with a, a certain aesthetic. But there are a lot of features that HJC wants to kind of work into this as well. There's, like I said, a lot of these different helmets in the market, but within HJC's line, this is pretty much the only one that kind of matches with an aesthetic. So it's not really a, a step up or a step down with something that carries this similar aesthetic, which is probably why you're looking at this helmet to begin with. So the shell itself is fiberglass, three different shell sizes. Extra small through small gets one shell size, medium through large gets another shell size, and then extra large through 2XL uh, gets the third shell size. And so the full size range is extra small all the way through 2XL. Would have been nice to see a 3 or 4XL worked in here. I know that that's what HJC is known for. Uh, they're one of the few companies out there that get up into the larger sizes. Does come with a DOT safety rating, no ECE safety rating, no Snell, just DOT. Three intake vents, so you've got two vents at the top, and then you got a chin vent, no exhaust vents. So again, the kind of aesthetic leads the charge, so they left the back very clean and plain. So there's nowhere for that air to go. Once it's pushing through, it just rolls around your helmet, probably push through the, uh, the back portion of this, um, but not typically what we'd see from an HJC. Normally there's some exhaust vents out back. Three pounds, four ounces in a large, when we threw this on the scale, and it does have an intermediate oval head shape. So Really what we're talking about with internal head shape is we're talking about not just the size of the helmet, a large or an extra large, we're talking about how the actual shape of the helmet is designed. We do have a video uh, how to size and buy motorcycle helmets. If you're not sure, maybe this is your first time, but really when we say intermediate oval, a little bit longer front to back, a little bit narrower on the side of the head, and it is gonna work for the majority of you riders out there in the American market. So let's go ahead and talk about what you can expect with this. Again, not a lot to talk about here from a frills standpoint. You do have the, uh, the single intake vent. There is a closure mechanism on the inside of the chin bar for the, uh, for the chin vent on this. And then what I will say is that these vents are very difficult to use if you've got gloves on, especially because you're not sure, did I leave them open, did I leave them closed? So I would recommend setting the vents before you get on the motorcycle to ride. If it's a warm day, open them up. If it's a cold day, go ahead and close them in advance. From a detent standpoint, so the face shield over on the left-hand side, you get a little bit of a lever. You can kind of push in on this, and it pops, it pops the uh, the face shield up. But it doesn't really pop it up into like a like a little city riding position crack. It just kind of like loosens it, and then you grab and you pull. There is detents right in the middle position, but it's almost too far up to be used as a city position. So the detents on this is a bit odd in the fact that it's either closed, it's in the middle position, or it's all the way open. Would have loved to have seen. Just a little bit of a city, a city detents right about there would have been would have been nice to see for this. Now the face shield on this is the Pinlock Ready HJ41 face shield, and it will take a Pinlock uh, face shield insert. One is not included in the box, just FYI. And then from a on-off standpoint, it's actually pretty unique. You have a little thumb screw. <clears throat> you can just undo the thumb screw, and then once you tighten it up. You just push it back down and it's good to go. So you have a screwdriver. You can use a Phillips head screwdriver if you want to, but it's actually really easy. Just get your little fingernail under there, pull that up and twist it off without having to use a screwdriver. So just nice little design. Haven't seen that really before from a manufacturer, but it plays into the overall aesthetic of the helmet. So with that being said, the, uh, the other note here before we flip it over to the inside is that minimal branding on this. If you're looking at the majority of HJC helmets out there, they got HJC logos everywhere. Really the only place you're gonna see the HJC logo is right over here. And again, it's done in this kind of like a metal badge style. So it really works with the overall aesthetic that HJC is trying to maintain with this helmet. Take a look at the inside. You do have a chin curtain at the front, removable cheek pads, and a double D-ring design with the snap for the excess there. I was doing a video earlier and I, I got confused because the snap was closed and I didn't remember closing it. And then I realized that my cameraman had done that. It screwed me up when I was trying to take the cheek pads out, but I will not be fooled again, Michael. 
I will not. Now, while I'm pulling out the inside of the cheek pads on this, the one thing to note here is that it will accept the HJC 10B and 20B comm systems. So those are comm systems that will still mount uh, to the outside of the helmet, but they have a little battery pack holder in the back. So the battery pack would sit in the back of this. You can also use a regular comm system with this, um, but they are, des or is designed rather, to be used with that HJC 10B, 20B system, which is made by Cena. So very similar to the 10 and the 20S from Cena. if you're trying to figure out what the features are there. Very basic inside to the, uh, to the interior on this. A little bit of contour, very simple cheek pads, nothing really of note here, except for the ribbing on the bottom. Again, really kind of playing into the overall style and the aesthetic of the helmet. I am gonna be completely honest with you folks. Getting these cheek pads out is a little bit, the, the snaps are tight. They, they got tight snaps in here and you just wanna be careful. I'm trying to talk to you whilst also on snapping and I'm trying not to just rip the snaps out. So when you're doing it, you're probably not gonna be talking to somebody uh, that's watching you do it whilst trying to take them out. So again, very basic interior to this. And you can see as we talk about the speaker system, as I get this final liner pulled out, one note here is that you do have snaps up front, um, can put a little bit of pressure on your forehead. Normally we like to see where they just kind of go into a brow mount. So you do have snaps up front. Uh, would be nice to see them use a regular, you know, brow mount design that eliminates the snaps at the front. But you are gonna have pockets for your speakers. What I like about this is we've talked about this in some of the other helmets that we've worked on today. The speaker pockets are a little bit deeper, which works with some of the newer speakers that we're seeing on the market. A lot of the speakers that we're seeing from modern comm systems are a, a thicker speaker because they're trying to go with a better audio experience. And some of the helmets haven't caught up yet. They're, they're a little bit you know, shallower in their design of the cutout. The HJC pocket is a, is a relatively deep pocket. And then you've got the channels in there for the wiring. So you can wire up everything nicely when you get to the inside. Um, the, the biggest note that I have here is if you're looking at this helmet, you know, from a ventilation standpoint, um, you know, HAC is talking about their ventilation system with this, but really, you know, you've got some, some light channel cutouts in there. You've got some, some small brow vents up top, but this is not necessarily a helmet that is gonna flow a ton of air for you you know, at the top, carry through and give you the ultimate best venting experience. I would say the chin, the chin bar vent works really well. So you'll get a lot of air right in your face. But as far as like some of you out there that might have used a more sophisticated helmet where you can feel the airflow kind of pulling through the entire helmet itself, um, you know, this is gonna be a little bit limited from that. And that's really because HJC is putting form over a function a little bit with the design of this particular helmet. They really are going for that vintage race aesthetic. And so because of that, they wanted to keep the lines pretty clean around the back. But all in all, if you are out there in the market for a helmet and you're checking out all of these new vintage inspired helmets from different brands out there, um, HJC now has the V10 to be a player in this particular segment. There's a lot of folks out there that are utilizing the V10 on their rides. And if you wanna hear more about what they have to say, you can click the info button on your desktop or mobile device. You can read other rider reviews from folks that are rocking the V10 helmet. And if you still have questions for our customer service team as to which helmet is right for you and your riding style, you can always give them a call and they can walk you through all the different helmets available to make sure you find the right one to match up with your ride as well as your budget. I want to thank you for joining us for this look today at the HJC V10 helmet. I'm Spurge. Enjoy the ride.